if this keeps up, we're going to be in London till Boxing Day. Good evening, rock and rollers everywhere and the vinyl community. How are you all this evening? I hope you're well because I've got some bad news for you. Tonight we are going to be reviewing Give My Regards to Broad Street. Well, everything that needs to be said about this film has been said before. Google it. If you really want to know how bad it is, Google it. Or, or no, better still, watch it. But you'll never get that hour and a half of your life back. <laughs> I mean, I had a friend at the time and uh, he'd, he'd said to me, oh, do you want to come to the pictures with me? Uh, we'll pop down the curves and then we'll go and watch uh, this film. It's called Terminator. And I thought, oh, all right, if he's paying, I'm going. Anyway, it turns out to be a cult classic. So I thought, I'll return the favour. I says, hey Lee, do you want to come up with me? Uh, I, I, I'm going to go down the Curzon today because uh, the Paul McCartney film's on. Yeah, sure, sure. But anyway, you know, and it was on with a double bill <laughs> with the Frog Song. <sighs> Believe it or not, the Frog Song was a saving grace because he wouldn't talk to me for a month after this business. It was it, it was diabolical. I mean, just to quickly talk about the film, um, it, it, I think it was somehow he'd managed to get Ralph Richardson, the iconic British theatre uh, actor, involved, and it was his last performance. You know, all the great parts that man had been in, and he died directly after this film. He never got over it. He never got over it. <coughs> So I'll cut that out later. Anyway, so apparently McCartney really, you know, this is where his ego becomes a real problem. He, he doesn't, I don't think he listens. He's been living in the countryside for so long that he's, he's totally out of touch with reality. And this proves it. I mean, he must have gone into his offices and said, look, I've got this cigarette packet and I've written a plot to a film and this is true, and, and somebody must have said to him, great, great idea, Paul, yeah, whatever you say, whatever you say. Uh, how are we gonna pay for it? Oh, it's all right, uh, hang on, I've got some money here. Great, let's get on with it. And anyway, they've got uh, heavyweights like uh, Brian Brown um, involved, uh, plus the, do you remember Tracy Oldman? <laughs> they don't know about us. Yeah, she was in it as well. Nobody knows who the fuck she is now, but at the time she was she was quite popular. Anyway, the, the basic plot is there isn't a plot. It's a bunch of shit. But we're going to go through that. We're going to go through that. We'll, we'll talk about the film as we talk about the album. The album, amazingly enough, got to number one in the charts. But I remember at the time, and uh, there was... He did a lot of plugging for this film. I mean, he was on the Russell Harty show. God rest him. God rest him. Died of HIV. Um, he was on uh, Wogan, I think. He was, uh, which was a big, uh, big show in the evening. He was also on. Um, it, it, there was also uh, there was a program in England called the, the South Bank Show, and it's kind of an intellectual arts program. And they did a special, it, half an hour, forty-five minutes about the film. And of course, they're showing all the tempting bits and how McCartney's been doing the music for it. So it looked, it looked, it looked uh, really good. It looked well. You know, the more cynical amongst us would have thought, mm, "I'm a bit sceptical." But the host Melvin Bragg was talking to McCartney. McCartney was talking to him, and it was all looking, "Oh yeah, this is good. This is uh, yeah. I've got to go see this when it comes out." So they were so. Due to all that publicity, I think it got to number one as a result. Anyway, the album, oh, well, well, look, we're not gonna mess around because uh, half the tracks are, are old tracks from, from Tug of War and, uh, and, and, and Silly Love Songs and, and from, from uh, Speed of Sound and, and also a bunch of Beatles. Oh, I forgot to tell you, Ringo Starr and his wife 
uh, Miss Goodfies from James Bond. She's <laughs> she's a oh Agent Triple X. That was her name, and she's she's on it. Barbara Back. Oh, and my God, I mean Ringo. I know he, they call him an actor, but. He's not really an actor, is he? <laughs> I mean, he's not. He's not Lawrence Olivier. <laughs> well, anyway, so he's in it as well, adding to the adding to the general despair of the film. I think. And uh, anyway, let's get on with the tracks. Uh, oh, here's here's the uh, here's the the album. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, please. People in the vinyl community, don't get snotty with me. I already explained. I've had all of the albums. I've bought all of the albums. I know what I'm talking about. So don't get shitty with me if I'm holding up something that I've burnt. Because I've burnt it the way I want it, you know. All right? Leave me alone. Leave me alone. We'll discuss it outside if you want. All right? Okay. Anyway, so the first track is... Uh, is no more lonely nights. What can I say? This, this, it's like, um, you know, like my love on Red Rose Speedway. It's, it's really about the, the only track that's got any depth at all. It's got a beautiful guitar solo. I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, Roger Waters, uh, Dave Gilmore, and uh, oh, I can wait another day until I call you. You only get anyway. You, the, 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 I'm gonna give this one. I mean, it's 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 a brilliant track. It is. It's just it's. I, I want to give it a ten. I will give it a ten. This this also got to number two in the uh, the charts in England, so it was a, it was a good. Show. And it had a great video as well. Well, sort of scenes from the film, but there's this good bit where London sort of turns modern into an old fashioned city. Yeah, it's, it's it's quite good for its time, you know. It's, uh, anyway, that's that's that. And then we're going to move on to uh, a couple of old records, which I, I'm not going to dwell on. Uh, we will go through. Sunshine, uh, something called corridor music, which isn't even there. It's a bit of talking. Uh, yesterday, um, here, there, and everywhere. Right, those are the old Beatle records. Uh, he brings nothing to them. If you want to hear them, listen to the originals. All right, it's, I'm not even going to talk about them. But what we'll do, I'm going to give them um, all two out of ten. All two out of ten, and, uh, and and then we go on to um, for some reason he's he's done um, tug of war tracks. He's did uh, ballroom dancing. Right, I'm gonna give this I'm gonna give this a two again because what was the point? There's no point in it, and it's not such a good version either. And, uh, and oh, and Wanderlust, Wanderlust. I mean, it's not as good as the original. It's not. So with with that, I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a two as well. Um, then he's got this next one. Is sorry, that's flies bugging me. Silly love songs. <laughs> Now, forgetting about the song, which which is a classic, but I'm going to give it a two because I, I don't like people redoing their songs. I, I'm, I'm, I'm against, I'm opposed to that. I don't like it. Even if it's for a film, it's, it's just not... But he's dressed up like a, like a sperm. I mean... It's, it's fucking... It's a joke. And it's this really sort of camp scene where the, he gets into a fight. I don't know if it's that particular part of the film, but there's this really sort of gay bit in it. And it's just like they're, they're having this sort of West Side Story fight on the ballroom. Oh, that's ballroom dancing. 
Uh, I'll get it all muddled up, but but the film's a pile of shit. Like I said, watch it, and you will regret it. I've warned you. I have warned you. Um, right. So silly love songs. Uh, if I haven't said already, two, two. Um, did we mention ballroom dancing? Ballroom dancing. We're going to give that a two. We are. So I'm getting all muddled up. It's the end of the week. I'm confused. I've had a lot of things to think about. Uh, Mrs. Shawness in. She's 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 come back and she's she didn't wash my dishes properly. She she sort of washed them in cold water and 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 just added a tiny bit of. I think she grew up when there was rationing or something because she doesn't like putting the hot water with with dishes and and they're all greasy. So that I like, still got chili con carne um, stuck to the pan. I, I'm gonna have words with her. I'm gonna have words with the agency about this. Anyway, back to the story. So now I think I think this is side two. Now this is one of the original tracks. Eh, not such a bad boy. Such a bad boy, no more, no, 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 no. It's crap. It's crap. It's why bother writing a song if it's going to be this bad? Come on, McCartney, you could do better than this. Um, one out, of, one out of ten. Because you know I've I've sang it in the past, and I've tried desperately to like it. And the same applies to the next track. No values. No values. No values. No values at all. Do 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 do. Uh, I'll I'll give it two, two because again it's the same as not such a bad boy. It's just a waste of time. Um. All right, so then we've got so bad. Again, I'm not. I'm not even going to rate it. I'm going to give it a two, two out of ten. Four, no one. Yeah, four, no one. Uh, that, uh, that kind of works on the film. He's doing it in the Albert Hall. It's quite good. Uh, love that shouldn't lasted years. And yeah, I'll give that. A, I'll give that a five for effort. Like I'm opposed to these these songs though, as you know. Um, right, okay, I, I'm running out of time, so I've got to be quick. Uh, the next one is Eleanor Rigby, and that's followed by a song called Eleanor's Dream. This is a, this is like orchestral, and this is the bit with with Ringo, and they're all dressed up like Victorians, and then they they go over a waterfall and die, and Ringo's face is going, <laughs> shit. All right, so anyway, long and winding roads. No, I'm not rating it, and um, there's a song called Good Night Princess. This this gets a zero, a zero out of. Ted, it's fucking awful. So, thank you for coming to see the show and stuff like that. Nothing, nothing. And finally, uh, oh no, no, fi yeah, finally we've got No More Lonely Nights play out. No more lonely nights. No more lonely nights. Now, my mate Jezard, he, he loves this one. I can wait another day until I go. No more lonely nights. Wah, 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 wah. I like it. I'm gonna give this. Uh, I'm gonna give this a ten, just like the the ballad version. It's 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 good. I like it. It's it's corny, but it's good. All right. Bonus time. Bonus time. Right. So we haven't got a lot of bonuses today. We've only got one. Three guesses what it is. It's the frog song. <laughs> This song, as Bono would say, this song's caused a lot of talk, maybe too much talk. There was a cartoon that went with it, 
it's watchable. You know, the kids like it. You know, so, boom, 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 boom. Bum, bum, bum. But as a career move, I mean, you know, he was McCartney had made a lot of mistakes in the seventies by being coming across as some wishy washy fucking prick, and then trying to go punk with embarrassing results. This was before Press to Play got even things even worse. But now he's messing around with kids, kids stuff, Rupert the Bear and everything, and you know, and you think. Why are you writing a song like this? What would John Lennon say? What would he say? Oh, and, and anyway, the the, uh, the B side. This is also on the film, which is about fifteen minutes uh, long, and it's, I think it made a killing though uh, on the on the on the VHS when it got released on a video. It, it made a killing. Lots of people bought it. I mean. My sister, she got it for her kids. Um, we all we we all stand together. The humming version. Uh, again, it's the same kettle of fish. But how can McCartney have done these things and think he's going to get away with it? I mean, years later, people are still saying, "Oh, Paul McCartney, the Frog Song." It, it, it's not. It's not a legacy, Paul. It's not a legacy. Anyway, the whole album. It's, I'm afraid I'm going to have to give it, oh, the humming version I'm going to give, oh, and the frog song I'm going to give um, two out of ten because it's embarrassing. And the humming version, which is the B-side, I'm going to give um, a zero out of ten because there's no excuse for it. There ain't. And the album itself, here comes the score, folks. One, one out of ten, and that's only because of No More Lonely Nights. I mean, it's got a higher score than Press to Play, I'll give it that, but a lower score than Wildlife. So, make your own minds up. See you later, folks. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you.